<laughs> Lord, I give you the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Facebook cut the video after I was almost in the middle of preaching. I was getting ready to finish up, and they cut the video. They cut it another time. So, Father, thank you, Lord, that this video will be preached the way it was supposed to be preached, and no more hindrances in the name of Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Okay, let's go ahead and finish this second part of the message. I'm not restarting nothing. I'm going right into part two. Glory to God. I didn't know it was going to be a two-parter, but I'm going right into part two. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. All right. Now watch this. People have said many times that there is no time in eternity, but they're wrong. And I'm going to show you Revelation 8 and 1. Sister White, God bless you. I'm glad you tuned back in to the second part of this message. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Revelation 8 and 1, and it said there was a period of about 30 minutes of silence in heaven. Now, the rabbis teach that that 30 minutes is translated, amen, is translated to three months. Oh, glory to God in heaven. Thank you, Jesus. So for three months, heaven will be silent. Let me tell you something. They say, oh, 30 minutes is all you get. No, baby, you get three months. If you don't like shouting and praising God and everything, you love the Lord, but you just don't like to shout about Him. You get three months, honey. That's all you're going to have. After that, we're going to be praising Him for all of eternity. Watch this. Bless God in heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But I found out why it's three months of silence. Watch this, y'all. Now, watch this. Just like in a courtroom when the judge is ruling. Zephaniah 1 and 7. Zephaniah 1 and verse 7 says these words right here. He said, when you come before my... Mm, glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. That's right. Amen. The tide is turning. That word, that dramatic word is... Tide, amen. Zephaniah, if you could go ahead and put that uh, translation there, I'd greatly appreciate it. Zephaniah 1 and 7. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let me say this. Like I said, the word time is translated into tide. And the tide is changing, my friend. It's the calm before the storm. And Zephaniah 1 7, God says, You will be silent when you come before me for judgment. You will be silent in my presence. So when God's getting ready to judge, there is total silence. People say, Oh, God's judging in my favor. Yes, He is. But my friend, when he judges the world for the lies and the blasphemies and the immorality and the murder that it's committed, when they stand before the one who is the all-consuming fire, let me explain something to you that's going to happen, my friend. All of heaven will be silent. Oh, I don't know who I'm preaching to tonight. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I feel your glory, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. It was the calm before the storm. And the tide was changing. It's his desire to reset your future, though. Joel 2 and 25. It is God's desire to reset your future. Joel 2, 25. I'll restore to you the years of the locust and the canker worm and the palmer worm have eaten away. That's what he declared. Amen. Glory to the Lamb of God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 
We need people today just like the sons of Sceva that know the time that is spiritually in. Amen. First Chronicles 12 and 32. We need people just like that. Amen. Glory to God in heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. The sons of Issachar. I hope I said that. Did I say the sons of Issachar? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. We need the sons of Issachar. We need people like the sons of Issachar that know what time it is. Sorry if I messed that up, y'all. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. God the Father has a set time for each and every thing Ecclesiastes declares. And it's also in Daniel 12 and 7, God has set everything in his time. It's his time frame. Like Sister White sung in the first episode of the video tonight, it's his time. Not your time or my time. It's God's time. Glory to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to the Lord. Amen. But do you know what's amazing? And I love it. Praise God, Sister Kimberly. God bless you. I love you in the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Amen. You know what's really crazy, amazing right here? Even though everything is in God's time, watch this. <laughs> everything is in God's time. Jesus said, if I, Jesus is God, he's declaring himself God right there. He said, if I had not shortened the time of the Antichrist, surely the very elect would be deceived. People have misquoted the scripture for years. I'm thinking about writing a book one day called That Ain't What It Says and actually show you the scriptures that have been misquoted and show you the right scriptures beside them, parallel to them. And, you know, the phrase and then the scripture. Amen. I, I've been praying about that for years. The Lord's had that on my heart. And I feel like if I do that, I'll be like C.S. Lewis, an apologetic for the faith. Amen. Which would be fine with me. I mean, I've already been told by many people that I'm I remind them of C.S. Lewis and that is a very high compliment for me to receive and I accept it and I give it back to God as a thanks amen hallelujah Jesus glory to the Lord amen thank you Jesus but let me say this it's his desire to reset your future we need sons like the sons of Issachar who know what time it is. For God has said everything in his time, Daniel 12, 7. See, God is not affected by time because he's outside of time. But yet God does everything on time. Because remember what I just said, Galatians 4, 4 through 6. He came in the fullness of of time the time that he was supposed to be here had finally come and he came to the earth Daniel 12 and 7 mentions three time frames times, times and beginning of times what's he talking about there is more than just the two times that we know, which are Kronos, our time frame, and Kairos, which is God's time frame. Well, watch this. There's also the Moedim, the appointed time by God. Times were given by God that he put down, and Sister White spoke about it, about Pentecost. That, that There were events that God put down in his calendar and said, you will not miss them. 
Then let me tell you something. Do you know Deuteronomy 16.16 16 was written for the church to come? Oh, glory to God in heaven. It was written for those after the rapture and the new Jerusalem had been built. It was meant for them that one time that there was three times a year that there was three times a year where men would come before God and assemble themselves and represent themselves before the king. Deuteronomy 16, 16, it was for a time to come. Not just for Deuteronomy, it was for, it was literally for the time to come. It was for the new millennium that God was going to come in. Amen. It's three times where God meets with his people every year. Deuteronomy 16, 16. That's now as well as for then. 2 Corinthians 6 and 2. Even Paul talked about keeping the feast. Even Paul talked about because it's God's time clock. It's God's way of meeting with his people on a certain time. And I don't know why I had to bring that into the meeting tonight, but let me tell you something. God has everything in his time. It's not in our time. It's in his time. And the time will come, Jesus said. Shama te kama on The time will come, says the Lord, that when men that men will kill you because they're thinking that they are doing God a service. The time will come. You can hide your face in the sand as much as you want, says the Lord. But I am calling. It's up to you to pull your head out of the sand. I am calling, says the Lord. Will you not answer? Will you be as my people of stubbornness as they were and not answer the call of the Lord to repent and turn to righteousness? For I am calling, says God, but I will not call forever. I will not strive with men forever as there was a time clock set for then in the days of Noah it is the same time clock today in the times of Noah that we are living in my people you are living in the days of Noah you are living in the days of the Nephilim and if you will just turn turn to my grace and go upon the ark and quit ignoring the rain. Quit ignoring the smell of rain. For soon the flood, but not of water, but fire will come. Soon the flood of fire will come. And only those that have come into my ark, says God, shall be saved. Oh, God. Hallelujah, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. I'm telling you something, my friends. Tonight, it's time out for playing games with God. He said the time is far spent and the day is at hand. Let us cast off the works of darkness. Let us put on the armor of light. Come to Jesus. Pray with me. Jesus, I repent of my sins. I come to you a sinner. I believe that you died on the cross, that God the Father raised you from the dead, and I am saved. 
in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. I pray healing for you. I pray deliverance. I pray Jesus fill you with the Holy Ghost and fire in the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. I love you. God bless you. I'll see you in the next meeting or in the air in heaven. I love you. God bless.